showed love for my story time on how I almost drowned and learned how to swim when I was a child. I know that people enjoyed the video and that's all that matters. I put a lot of time and effort into editing in that video and the editing they said was like super, so I appreciate that. Much love to you. And everybody in the Dream Team, joining the Dream Team, I see my subscribers going up like crazy. Thank you so much for showing your love. Um, and again, um, I'm gonna continue doing these story times because I never knew they were this popular until I started doing them. Besides my rapture dreams, which we don't wanna go there because my last rapture dream, I know I got a lot of views. So thank you for the love for that too. I'm, always, I'm not surprised by my rapture dreams because that's just the popular thing on my channel. It's always been popular. So people want. And now people want story times. So that's, that's another great thing. So I've got a lot of story times. I got, I got a story time where I got stuck in North Carolina and almost killed and was in a KKK um, facility, like in, the, like in the city, like the area, Davidson County, where they like burn people, burn, burn black people and stuff like that and freaking cut their heads off and stuff like that. Like, honestly, I've been in a place like that where I had to survive. I had a story time where I went to Philadelphia and I had a situation with my manager and she was a sex pervert and um, totally unprofessional and totally um, uh, just disrespectful and very, very evil. Um, got stuck in Philadelphia, I had to get out of there and that was another story. And I had another one, well the, the one I'm going to be telling today is how I got robbed. Now this is the, uh, this is the special one. Um, before I even tell you the story, before I leave out any details, anything, and they tell you 100% what happened in as accurately as possible, humanly possible, I want to take the time to say to you, this is a moment where we all should just be grateful. I really want to say this because I feel it's really important that we can recognize how grateful we need to be. And I feel in life, when you have a situation, be grateful for the things we have. So I just wanna take that time to, to, to say that I'm grateful for my love, my life. I'm grateful for where I am and I'm grateful as how far I've come, for how, how far I have come. Honestly, I'm grateful for so many things in my life and I just want to take that time out to say I've accomplished a lot in my life and I'm grateful for that. I know there's a lot of people out there struggling, but this is the time and moment that we all need to be grateful for. So just remember that God is always watching above us and we need to see what we have in our life and why we should be thankful. But I, I just had to, I had to say that. So this is going to go back way back to a time when I believe I was in my parents' house. I haven't moved out yet. I was still living at home, of course, stuck in my room. I was a nerd, whatever. Never came out of my room, never had any friends. I had friends, but yo, if you wanna know about what happened to my friends and all that stuff, you listen to my previous story time about how I almost got arrested, that video available there. Um, that video, will s it tells it all what happened to me. In my situation but that is not the video I'm doing today today I'm doing the video about how I got robbed literally if you ever were to walk in a room and see every single thing you love in that room and you just tr treasured it right your video games your uh, your watches your phones your uh, computer your driver's license, your wallet, your credit cards, your money, everything you can ever humanly possibly think of and imagine in that room that makes you happy. You imagine looking in that room and it's there. Next moment, an hour or two, maybe three hours, four hours, something later, maybe even five, that room is clean out. Cleaned out as if somebody went in there and just cleaned you out like from Christmas and jack every single one of your presents and you don't even know where they went, dude. But let's just say that's a little taste of what I went through in my family. Now, I have to stress this right now because it's on my mind and it's really annoying. I get there are poor people. 
I get there's people that's hurting. I get there's homeless people that just have to panhandle. But here's the thing. This is bef this is what I'm going to have to say right now. For the homeless people out there that's panhandling for money, that knows they can go out and get a job, that knows they can make a difference in their life, quit, quit panhandling, quit hurting other people that spend that that work that 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 work hard for their 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 money, okay, for the for the people that go to work and work a nine to five job every single day for seven days a week and doesn't have rest and almost burns themselves out they're hard paid earned money for those people you do not have the right to press put pressure on innocent civilians innocent people to panhandle them to give you money to go out and get drugs I'm telling you right now, you ought to be ashamed of yourself to do this. It's a tactic, and we're not dumb, we're not stupid, because we know exactly what you're trying to do. You're not doing it to get food. You're doing it to go and get drugs to get high, and get a high off of these uh, methamphetamines, or heroin, or cocaine, or crack, whatever, to make yourself feel like you feel good and let me tell you taking those kind of chemicals taking those kind of drugs yet alone is going to kill you and take you out okay so stop doing it go out get a job and stop being lazy and making up excuses that you cannot do better for yourself and your family and whoever it is you know what you're doing is wrong and you choose to keep doing it because it's an addiction go to rehab get help i get it's hard you're on cold turkey do what you got to do it's light in life it's hard it's a struggle i get that but don't be panhandling and pressuring poor strangers to give you money for drugs because it doesn't work with me and I can sure as hell tell you it's not going to work with other people because eventually they're going to start catching on to your little tricks and your little schemes and your little your little uh, tactics to try to get money to get drugs. It's not going to work. And, and, and I told the other the other day I had a homeless person did the same thing to me. I told him, off, dude. Off. So I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just being real. I'm sick of it. Quit panhandling for money to get drugs. Okay? If you need food, then say, I need food, not money. Can you help me get a burger from McDonald's? Can you, I need to get on my feet. Can you help me uh, try to save for a place? If it's a different topic for something to be related to your living style, if you're really struggling and you are homeless and you are in a bad position to where you cannot take care of yourself and you want to be sheltered, you want to have a blanket, fine. But if it's for drugs and you lie and you say you want food and you lie and say you want shelter, but then you know you go and turn around, they give you the money and you go find a, a drug dealer or whatever and you get drugs, karma is a B. We all know what happens when you do wrong. That's in the Bible. So, just can't stress that enough. So, let's get back to this. So, we're going to get to the story. So, what happened to me a long time ago? Let's go back to like when I was the age of... I was the age, I believe, of... 22... Or 21 I believe I was the age, I think I was the age of 20 about the age of 20 or 21 I remember a long time ago I used to work at a company I was making a lot of money I was a dishwasher I was making a ton of money I was making almost not I wouldn't say six figures but I was making me around close to about four to three grand a month maybe even more 
And I had an amazing life. I was driving a dream car I always wanted. I was wearing clothes that was expensive. I was looking good. I had high self-esteem. I was able to just spend money on what I wanted. I was going to the store buying like 50 and 60 items, buying like 50 and 60 coconut waters and stuff like that. Like coming out with like a bunch of fruit, like with like 20 or 30, 40 cans. You know what I mean? Like I was living good. Like my room was stacked up with sodas and fruits and beverages and and, and, and all sorts of uh, equipment in my room. I was living a life of, I, I, I would say prosperity, but I, I felt like I was living a life more of just success. Uh, I was very successful. And I still remember to this day that Anything in life that I wanted to happen in to that 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 time and moment in in year and place, it drove me to a place of peace, passion, and being me. So during this time. This is what happened. So I remember there was a day where I had just, I was so excited. I just got my phone. It was, it was a new phone I got. It was like the flip phone thing. And um, it was one of my favorite phones. It was the Sam's, I remember it was the Samsung 4G. It wasn't a flip phone. I'm talking about. It was the Samsung 4G top screen. And I love this phone. It was like, it had like the navy blue, dark midnight blue, dark blue color in the back of the phone. And I remember just looking at this phone and I was playing uh, phone games on it. I had like Half-Life on it. I had um, like the PSX games on it, the emulator, everything, right? All my music, everything was on it and I was so excited. And that day I remember it was, it was, it, it was coming towards night. I wasn't working for a few days. I was like, okay, I could relax. I, w I headed to the store to Walmart because I, I remember I always would go to Walmart and I would get these mandarin oranges. I don't know if you've ever seen the containers, but I'm gonna show you a picture. But I always would get these mandarin oranges and it would have these, um, the sweet, juicy tangerine oranges. And they're pretty expensive. I remember the containers that I got, they were like these little doll, doll containers that were like green and clear plastic. And they had the juice and they had like, they had the name, the brand. And um, I remember I got these. And I would go to the store, and these things are expensive. They're like three twenty-seven per container. I remember going in that place and getting like twenty of those things because I had so much money. I was walking around with like eight hundred to a thousand dollars in my pocket, and I remember looking at my account. I had like six grand or something like that, and I was like, "Wow!" And I remember just looking back, like I had so much money. But that night, I was on my way back to my car. Here's how this happened. So as I was on my way back to my car, I noticed as I got back in my car I'm about to leave I got my food I got uh, I got some tuna that day I got some supplies some groceries some things I needed because I want to eat some food and I put in I got the bags I put in my car so as I'm heading out and I'm making my way out of the driveway from the whole intersection in Walmart I glance over and I see this homeless girl woman whatever and I'm not gonna lie, this woman looked really beautiful and she got, like, she caught my attention. Like, just like the snake, the devil, what he does, he tricks you, man, he tricks you. And that's what happened here, man, I, I, I got tricked. I totally got tricked because I knew this was Satan trying to tempt me to try to hit on this woman. But it wasn't about hitting on the woman, I just wanted to help her. So what, I'm gonna get back in the store somewhere. So basically what happened was, as I was driving out, I made my way, this woman uh, approached my car. And she's like, look, like, I don't know what to do. I have no money. Um, I just need to make a call right now for a friend. I don't, I don't have my phone. I don't have a phone. I, I just need to make a phone call. And and my first instinct was like, no, I'm not going to give you a phone call. You're a random stranger. You're asking me to use my phone. Not going to happen. Like, that was my first answer. But then I thought about it. And I looked at this woman and she, and I could see her face is just drenched. Like, 
she you could tell she smelled horribly like gross the odor that from smells her was terrible putrid like gruesome nasty like if you ever were to walk into a cemetery and know what death smells like and i'm not trying to like be rude and cruel here but i'm being honest the smell of death is this smell that came off her it was like bo it, it smelled like she didn't take a shower for like months and I could see that she had dirt all in her face and her skin was just scarred up. And you could tell she was scratching herself. You could tell that this woman had something mentally going on with her. Physically, mentally, emotionally. And I was like, wow. So, I looked at her and I'm like, I need to help this woman. Like, that was the first instinct that came to me. I was like, I need to help this woman. So, what I, so what I did, I was like, okay. Look, I'm gonna give you. I'm, I'm gonna let you use my phone. So I let her use my phone. She she made a call. I guess she called her family, friends, whatever. And then out of nowhere, I don't know why, my gut feeling told me something. Be careful with your gut feeling because it warns you. And I did not listen to it. I'm gonna get into this real soon here. So from there, what happened from there was this woman, after she used my phone. I offered to take her somewhere, get her a shower, get her some food. I'm a kind guy. I'm a loving and caring person. That's why a lot of people respect me and love me the way they do because the kind of person I am. Some people don't see that, but some people do. It doesn't matter. Um, but what happened from there, I told her, hey, hey let, let me bring you to my house. Now, I was, let me repeat, an idiot, an idiot to bring a random crackhead stranger to my house to try to give her a shower and food and make sure that she's on good terms and just well taken care of. Of course, in my head, I'm thinking, Maybe this could be like, I'm thinking in my head, maybe this is the Lord that brought this girl to me to be my girlfriend or something in the future. Maybe if I take care of her in time, maybe I could be in a relationship with her or something. Like that's in my head, that's what I was thinking. But at the same time, I was thinking like, I want to help this woman. So from there, what happened was she got in the car and we drove. She went to Walmart. Now here's the thing. I remember her walking into, uh, she had this big bag. That's another thing. She had a huge bag of a lot of items. It wasn't like, it was suspicious. It was like one of those feelings like where you know something's wrong, but you can't quite get your eye on it. And you're kind of thinking like, what? is this woman for real? Like, is, is she really? I'm like, no, 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 there's no way, no way. As I'm thinking God did this. I'm thinking that God did this or something. And of course I was tricked because the devil totally played me, like totally. This I'm gonna get to that. So, like I said, I picked her up. And she was talking about bowling and stuff, and we could go together, and and we could go on dates and stuff later on. And she's, and I, all I remember, she's like, thank you so much for taking care of me. Like, I could kiss you right now. That's what she said. She's like, I wanna kiss you right now. Like, like you don't understand what this means to me. Like, if I could, I would call you my, my boyfriend. Like, and I remember she said that. So like, she said all these things to me. And literally, like, she did, like, kiss me on the cheek. She did hug me and stuff like that. And and I kind of just felt like I was kind of in a love phase. But it was deception. So from there, I took her to this place. And she went in there. And there was all, like, she spent some time in there. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, oh, my gosh, is this a time where I'm going to actually get a girlfriend? And I, I was just so excited about it. But I was tricked, you know. So she's walking into the store. And she doesn't come out for at least an hour. And I'm just looking back and forth. I'm like, why does this woman say? And I saw police, like, in the area. And I knew something was up. But I didn't know what was going on. Because I was, I, was, I was kind of confused. I was confused in a way where I couldn't quite grasp what was happening at that given moment in time. Because it was... 
one of those electrifying feelings that just gets you off your feet and stumbled like over a bunch of gray stairs. Like, you know when you're about to trip and fall and flip and the momentum is throwing you over like a front flip? I mean, if you were ever to know what wind does, like a hurricane to knock you and sweep you off your feet like a freaking broom and in a dustpan with the dirt on the ground and you flip up and swip up, like like the momentum when you go to kick a ball and you miss the you miss the angle and you miss the leverage, but then somehow that that uh, that 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 momentum just sweeps you and swiftly kicks you up under your feet and you're in the air. That's how quick I got quick and swept up with this feeling that I had with this woman. She finally comes out about an hour later and she gets in the car and she's got over hundreds of makeup bottles in this bag and she comes in the car and she tells me she tells me um i just got a bunch of makeup and i'm like how did you get the makeup and she's looking at me she's like i just got the makeup we can go it's fine we can go i'm like did you pay for that and she told me she's like oh yeah 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 i paid for it you know when somebody's being sarcastic, like they really paid for something, but they didn't really pay for it? She's like, oh, yeah, 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 I paid for it. I'm like, did you steal that? Did you did you just steal all that makeup? No, I was just, I was just trying it out. I'm going to bring it back. I'm like, did you just steal that makeup? Or did you borrow it? I'm going to bring it back. I paid for it. Trust me, sweetheart. I paid for it. That's what she called me. She's going, trust me, sweetheart. I paid for it. I'm like, okay. Okay. So you pay for it. That's what you're saying to me, right? Yeah, I paid for it. Okay. So I told her, I was like, you know, the right thing to do would just to take all that makeup and bring it back to the store and do the right thing. If you stole that, I am not going to be liable for anything here. I have nothing to do with this. This is on you. She's like, I'll take the blame for it. I'm like, just put the makeup back and do the right thing. Cause I'm always doing, I'm always about doing the right thing. I don't do the wrong thing. You know, I've learned a lot of my life and experiences and stuff. I've been through it. I've been through the whole situation about being arrested at gunpoint, you know, handcuffed with my hands bleeding with a broken foot, almost killed, you know, thrown out in the middle of the desert. You know, I, I've been through the worst of the worst experiences. Trust me. I know what it feels like to be close to death. So, like I said, okay, I was like, okay, whatever. We just, just gonna get going. So what I did is I was like, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna go, whatever, okay? So that's it, I drove her to my house. And I will never forget it, she, came, she comes to my house, right? Now, I'm not gonna lie. I do feel like this woman did like me, like me. However, she was on drugs. See, I didn't know this. I didn't know what it was like when you get on drugs because I never was involved with drugs until late. That, that's a story way later on. You can check that out. I talk about that on my story time with how I got arrested. But she was on serious drugs. I'm talking about methamphetamine, meth, methamphetamine uh, heroin, cocaine, acid, you name it, right? She was on all these drugs, okay? So, of course, she's in my room and stuff, and I'm laying down. And um, I remember I was in the room and um, I was looking at her and we were just talking like hours. She's telling me about herself. She's telling me like what she does. She's telling me like what kind of boy, how, what kind of man she wants in life. And, and I just remember her saying that she wanted to massage me for a couple of hours and stuff and make me feel good and just all these things. And I remember that I said, like, okay, well, you can go ahead and take a shower now. I know you, you stink right now, but you go ahead and take a shower and get fresh up. There's soap in there and everything. Just make yourself at home. And I introduced her to my mom, my dad, my sister, everything. And they all knew something was off. And yeah, so from there, okay, she's taking a shower. And of course, like I wanted to go, I wanted to take a pee. Now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a pervert or anything. I just... I was really attracted to this woman because she was a beautiful woman. I'm not going to lie. She really was beautiful. I really thought that she came in the eyes of Jesus. I really did. But I was deceived by the devil. So, of course, 
Of course, I want to take a little peek, whatever. But she comes out, and her hair is just gloomy, glossy, blossom like like flowers, just like this this road, like this 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 terrain of just of 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 a petal of just beauty, man. Just like a model, like walking out on the stage and just having paparazzis everywhere around her and just her eyes and everything she was clean she was smelling good and and like I could smell her hair and I was just so attracted to this woman and I was like what can I do to get your number like do you have a number she's like I don't have a number but I have a Facebook I can give it to you and she's like look we will catch back up next time and we can go on a date and that's what she said she's like I'm gonna take you on a date and so here's what happened so from there I go in the bathroom to go do something, and next thing I know, um, she's like, well, you know, it was really nice meeting you. You're such a nice guy. You're so respectful. You know, I could say I love you right now, but I, I don't know you yet. I want to get to know you better, and then after that. So here's what happens. So next thing I know, after I bring her over to my house and everything, and we talk it out, and we're talking for hours and hashing it out and getting to know each other, my dad decides, you know, okay, we're going to take her home. So she's like, oh, can you just drop me off at my friend's house? So she's in the back and everything. And, you know, of course she gave me a hug and all this stuff. And like, she really made me feel like I was going to be loved. Like she really made me feel like, like I was somebody important, you know, but that's what they do. They trick you. So the sad part is after I dropped her off, I'm on my way back home, right? Next thing I know, I arrive back at my house. And this is the part that's gonna get you. The moment I walk and set foot in my garage, we already know stuff is missing. I look at my garage, we're missing so much stuff, dude. We're missing tools, we're missing food, we're missing um, my uh, iPod, there was a thousand dollar iPod that got stolen. I'm missing my phone. I go back in my room. I can't find my phone. I'm looking everywhere. I can't find my phone. I'm freaking out. I can't find my phone. I can't find my, my credit cards. I can't find my information. I can't find my information for my car. My sister, she got her driver's license stolen. My dad's got his information stolen. I want social security. Uh, all of his information from the wallet was getting stolen. Uh, this woman cleaned us out, man. Like, this woman was evil. Evil. Like, she cleaned us out. You know when someone robs somebody and they clean it, don't leave nothing left? Like, she left us nothing. She cleaned us out. The only thing she left me was a few games and stuff. She stole my beaches from the, the uh, Dr. Dre's. There was like $500 my mom got me and my dad. Don't, she stole those. She stole my um, my games. She stole my clothes. She stole um, a bunch of stuff. She stole my accessories. Dude, this woman cleaned us out with probably close to two to three thousand dollars, maybe even more. Um, even tried to steal the garage door remote that we had for our for our house. So she cleaned us out. Next thing you know, I'm freaking out. I'm running downstairs. I'm like, Dad, we've been robbed. We've been robbed. And my dad's like, well, wh 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 where's, 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 my, where's my, my credit cards? Where's, where's my debit card? Where, where? And my sister's freaking out, and she's missing her stuff, too, and I'm missing my stuff. And I'm like, we're, we're all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this big puddle, a bunch of mess piled up to the top of the toilet, and we just got flushed, right? We just got played. We just got tricked. I just got deceived. And I'm sitting upset out of my mind. And I got to tell you, this sucked. So what I did is smart. Of course, I still had her information on Facebook. She followed me. She added me as a friend. And I asked her, why did you steal our stuff? Why can't you bring it back and do the right thing? She didn't know what by no reply. So, of course, I'm smart. I like to do things the right way. So, of course, I go on her contacts and I get in contact with her brother and tell him what she did. I get in contact with her best friend, who's a black woman, and she tells me 
we, like I after the next day, I talked to her friend, and she told me, yeah, like her name is Kaylee, and she said she's on some serious drugs right now. She's she she needs a lot of help. Where is she? Do you know when you last saw her? I'm like, I last saw her was at the Walmart, and she stole all of her stuff. She robbed us. We got robbed. Like literally, we got robbed. Everything we had got robbed. All my money got robbed. She tried to use all my money on our credit cards too. Like she tried to max out all our credit cards. She tried to max out our debit cards. She tried to max out everything. My dad's social security. It was a mess. This woman was messed up and evil. She was, she was a disgusting person, right? So I'm talking to her friend and I'm telling her all this stuff. I'm upset and I'm, and I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, Dad, what are we gonna do? So we called the cops. So we did an, an investigation support. Uh, uh, you know, we we filed a, a police report. They said that, you know, we don't know what we can do to try to get your stuff back, but thank you for the details. We're going to look into this and see what we can do to get an undercover officer, whatever, and try to get your stuff back. So from there, of course, I'm miserable, man. I don't have a phone anymore. I'm out of my mind. I lost, like, I've lost so much money. I lost my debit cards, my credit cards, almost my driver's license, everything else. I'm upset, out of my mind. Everybody's upset, and we're like, you know, we're just gonna have to live with this. I made the biggest mistake bringing this woman in my life, bringing this woman in my house. I was an idiot. I was stupid, and this is why you don't trust poor people, homeless people. You don't trust them. So I don't trust them still today. And I ain't gonna trust them ever again because I learned from my own experience. And ever since this happened to me. That day after I talked to her brother, and her brother was chill, he was really cool. He was from North Carolina as well. We were talking, and he was telling me like, I can't believe she did this to you. Like, I'm gonna try to get in contact with her. And 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 his and her best friend said she was gonna try to get in contact with her, but she didn't have a phone. So after that, the story is almost done. What ended up happening is we called the police. We they filed a report, police report, and it took Close to around a month to two months before something happened, and I'll never forget it. After everything was stolen, and I'm pretty much going without a phone for about two months, which is miserable because all my friends are trying to contact me, and they can't contact me. I'm having a hard time because I can't get to work because like like nobody can contact because I don't have a phone. It's it's unprofessional. I'm upset. I'm sad, I'm like, don't know what to do, I feel hopeless, what am I going to do? Of course, I look up to Jesus, and I just start praying, I just start praying to God, God, please let this woman do the right thing, please let her just return her stuff, please, 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 just let her, and of course, I tried doing everything I could, I was smart, I was, I was like, you know what, maybe, maybe I can track her down with, with my, with the, 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 the phone look up, right, uh, you know, like the, 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 the feature on your phone, where it can detect, if someone steals your phone, you have this app where you can locate your phone. Well, that's what I did. And we had turned it on and I found out where my phone was, but it was like somewhere like way away from us, like two, three hours away. So we knew this woman was up to no good. She was doing something. So of course we find out like the destination, but we don't know exactly the location. We don't know the address, nothing. So of course we just start praying. That's all we do, start praying. Praying, 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 praying. And I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. And I still remember to this, to this day. I was in my room, it was late at night, almost around eight to nine o'clock. This is when we got our stuff back. Not everything, but I'm gonna get to that. So just before night, or it was just before it's about to get midnight, it's still around like nine or eight o'clock. I was playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and I was, uh, or no, I was playing my favorite game, Ghost. Call of Duty Ghost, and I was getting chem strikes and stuff like that, and I was playing with my clan, because I had a clan, RMX3. Very popular clan, but it doesn't matter. So I was, I was playing with my clan, and I was telling them the whole story and what was going on, and like, dude, we feel for you, like, we're gonna all be praying for you. All my fans are praying for me, everybody was praying for me, my clan's praying for me, my parents are praying for me, friends are praying for me, praying for me, everybody, right? Next thing I know, I'm playing, and I'm about to chem, I get a chem strike, whatever. I was playing, I think I was playing on Favela, the new, the newer, they had the new maps and stuff that was coming in for Ghost. And I remember I got a call. And the guy said, you know, if we get a contact, if we find out anything, we will call you. A miracle happened. I remember that night we went downstairs and my dad did this prayer. And I felt, I could have swore, I'm not kidding, I saw a black 
spirits, demons leave the house. Like, like, like a swarm of them, like, whoosh, like out the door. And I saw these spirits leave the house. And we saged the house and everything, made sure that, you know, I, I, I went through, I took salt, I put it everywhere, right? Salt, burned it, saged it, the whole house to get rid of all evil spirits, demons, whatever. Because that's what this was. This was Satan did this. Did this. So that's what I did. And after we prayed that night, we got a call around 10 o'clock at night, close to about 11. And I believe it was an undercover police officer. And he's like, we don't know how this is possible, but we managed to come across your, your 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 stuff, right? Do you have a Samsung 4G? I'm like, yeah. Do you have uh do you have so and so uh driver's license this that car information maybe for this? Yeah. And so on and so forth. So he kept telling us the items and stuff. Well, we have some really good news for you. Actually, fortunately, you guys are lucky because we managed to come across a homeless woman on drugs, tweaked out of her mind, walking and wandering through the mall in Mission Viejo with a big, enormous bag of stolen items and equipment from everyone throughout the neighborhood like this woman has stole ten to fifteen thousand dollars worth of items and not just that from stores all through the city i'm like goodness gracious you've got to be kidding me i am such an idiot man i'm like i am so dumb right so of course he's like yes yeah, so let's let's get your stuff back yeah um we we caught her we caught her, and she's going to be going to uh, jail. Um, and, yeah, we're going to figure out what to do from here, but she's definitely a criminal, and we're definitely going to press charges on her. And, yeah, she's not looking good for her. So, anyway, uh, let me uh, give you a call back to find, so, so we can give you the uh, the address to come in and pick up your stuff. you got to sign some papers, and there you go. I was like, and I remember just I was like, closing my eyes, just looking up at Jesus' name. And I remember it was that prayer that my dad did, and I knew it was a miracle. Once I saw those demons leave that house, I knew that the blessings were going to come in. I knew the blessings were going to start raining. I knew they were going to start coming in the house. I knew it. So after that, I got my clothes. I got my shoes on, everything. Of course, I'm like, dude, I need my phone. I need my stuff. We're, we, I get my clothes. I get everything. I get in a car. We drive down to the, the police station undercover, and all my stuff is there. Except the sad part is she did sell some of my items. I did not get everything back. She sold my $500 beats, unfortunately. She almost sold my phone, but my phone came back cracked. Not too bad, but it was a little cracked. So I was still thankful that I got my phone back. She sold my $1,000 iPod with everything in gel broken with games and everything. And she sold a bunch of games and everything else so she stole a lot from us and we did some of that stuff we did not get back my sister got back her driver's license my dad got back his credit his credit cards and stuff information i got back my credit cards i found out that i had to close down my credit cards she tried using some money defaulted they closed down the account right away so a lot of stuff got stolen but we did get back some stuff so we're still fortunate that we did get back some belongings we did get back some things but it just shows to show you do not trust a stranger on the street. Don't ever bring a homeless woman or man or anybody to your house if you don't know who they are, dude. You are asking for trouble. And I learned this the hard way because I know what it's like to go without a phone for two and a half months. It sucks. It messes up your schedule. You can't think. You can't work. It just is the worst feeling in the world. And to know that... All your stuff got stolen and your games and my PSP got stolen too. Let's keep that in mind. So a lot of stuff got stolen and I didn't get it back. I never got back my PSP either. She sold all this stuff for drugs. This is again why I say don't give money to homeless people. They are a scandal or scan they're scandalous and they only want money for drugs. Okay? The people that want to make a difference can make a difference. Now, 
I was looking at a um, YouTuber, Tell from the Graves, and he goes around, God bless this dude, he goes around and he helps homeless people that do have a problem with drugs but do want to make a difference. There's a woman named Monique, and there's a number, there's, a, there's, there's two couples named Slum and Mercy. God bless their hearts. They do want to do better. They do want to get to rehab. Those people, that's different. They, those are the kind of people that do deserve money that are trying to make a difference. If they're, if people are trying to make a difference and they want to make things better for their life and they want to go in a good direction, then that's what you need to give them. You don't want to be scraggly and all over like a bunch of wild trees and leaves flying everywhere. No, you want to be yourself and honest with who you are period period no no questions asked that's what you want to do so going off um that's that so from there that's what happened after we talked to the police we got the we got the police report i got all my stuff back not all my stuff i got some of my stuff back and i just remember when i got my phone in my hand man i was I was literally almost crying, dude. I was in tears, man. I was, my head was down. I was like, oh my gosh, dude. Never again am I ever trusting a homeless person. Ever. After that, you best believe I blocked and removed that woman. Told her brother that we got some of our stuff back. Told her best friend that we got some of her stuff back. And what happened, what she did. And bro, she got in a lot of trouble. Because she. they said, oh yeah, we're going to be sending her to prison in Arizona. So I believe she got some prison time for that because she, I think she went over, she, she, she convicted at least over 30 to 40 different convictions. She had like 40 or 50 different charges on her because she was stealing, she was pretty much cleaning out the whole darn neighborhood. Let's just leave it at that. She was like a Santa Claus, but the opposite, like, like next Friday, like Friday after next. That kind of Santa Claus stealing all everybody's that stuff. That's that's what she was. Let's just put it put it that way. But anyway, that was the story time of how I got robbed or how I was robbed. And this is just a lesson on life. Do not put your trust in any stranger. I don't care who they are. Until you get to know that person, and you know it takes a long time to get to know someone. Until you really get to know that person and become friends or you work with that person, or if you're involved with this person, do not put your trust in a stranger. Just like you don't put your trust in a bee, because you know it will sting you. Don't put your trust in a wild animal, because you know it will kill you. Don't put your trust in something that you know is dangerous. And definitely don't put your trust in something that's not gonna be dangerous to your safe zone. You need to be smart, and be analytical about your decisions, your choices, and listen to your gut feeling. I had that gut feeling telling me I had two feelings. One feeling was like, okay, this woman is suspicious, drive off. There was a time when that was happening and she was in that store, something told me, leave her, drive off, go. And I knew that that was, G that was Jesus talking to me, telling me, Go, like, drive off. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go, my son. Like, that was Jesus. And there was another voice that said, no, it's okay. Let her let her get in the car. Bring her to your house. This is going to be your, your so-so whatever. There was two voices. There you have the devil in the back, and you have Jesus. And the angel. Two of them. And, of course, I was the dumb one, and I listened to Satan. And because I listened to that voice... I ended up getting robbed. My whole family got robbed. So, but we got back some of our stuff. The valuable, valuable lesson. Don't trust anybody. That's a stranger. So, I hope you guys enjoy that story time. Again, I want to say thank you for so much showing all your love for my last video. Um, with how I almost drowned. I know it's very enjoyable. The click rate is very high. Um, also, I'm going to say this right now. I just found out that I am partnered with freedom i have a partnership on youtube i've been partnering with freedom now for a couple years um i remember i applied for freedom when i was like 26 or 7 i think so i've been partnering now with them for about two or three years 
Um, I'm going to leave the details about that, the whole partnership and what that does for you. You can get paid for your ads and get paid for your videos and your content. And you get, they give you a lot of different tools and stuff like that. I'm on dashboard shows me like my analytics and what I'm earning and I get like ad revenue and all that stuff. It's really cool. But I'm probably going to start using their intro because I'm partnered with them. So I have to use, I have to use a partnership intro for my channel. So that's what I'm going to do because I don't do that and it's stupid because I am partnered. So I'm going to start using their intro on my channel. Um, I'm going to start doing that. But anyway, I just wanted to say that. Thank you so much. Also, I am going to be releasing that new single for my grandma, um, Dear Grandma, and um, the beautiful song for Mother's Day. It's gonna, I, think, I think I'm going to be releasing that probably about the 5th of May. If not, maybe a little earlier. i got to work on a graphic card design and stuff. But stay tuned a lot going on please i'm going to be very active on twitch from now on i am i am now going to try to be a full-time switch streamer i'm working really hard on the no death run um live for gears of war ultimate edition it's going to be really exciting i've been practicing a lot i got a new follower yesterday i was on twitch it was really fun it's really engaging i love talking to everybody i just appreciate the support and love i'm getting from everybody but that's what i wanted to say Thank you so much. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. And this is just a life lesson. Don't trust a stranger and yet along a poemless person. Not unless they're people like Slump, Mercy, or Monique, or anybody like that. Do not uh, trust them. Don't give out your money. Just drive off. Drive off. You're better off, man. You don't want it. You don't want this experience to happen to me to happen to you. Because it sucks. It is a horrible feeling to go two or three months knowing you don't have your stuff and you got stolen you got robbed and everything's just gone you go in your room and everything's there and the next next moment you go back to your room and it's empty it sucks so best thing to do be smart make good decisions and remember if you don't get no damage run take it seriously don't mess around with time patience and focus you will succeed i'm the possibility pro 235 also known as they call me the p2 pro that's my gamer game name and my rapper name is tsunami244 with two eyes and my, my Twitch is the P2 Pro. Instagram, Tsunami Loves God. Twitter is uh, the P2 Pro. All right. Take care. Stay blessed. Be smart. And do the right thing. I'm out. Peace. Also, if you want to see one of my latest no damage runs that I've done, and click that over here. I'm in the background of my no damage run that I did for Double May Cry 4. I did that on Heaven or Hell. This is the this the cover art. That's available on my channel if you want to check that out. And I did the one um, on uh, DMC Double May Cry uh, Definitive Edition, one of my favorite, favorite um, Xbox One games. I, I, I love it so much. I beat that game twice and did that no damage on heaven I, I did it on um human difficulty which is like supposed to be easy but it's not and then on nephilim which is extremely hard i did it on that difficulty and i did dante must die one of the missions whatever but i did the full run so all my other no damage runs you can go check them out as well dead dead cells as well so I, i've done a variety of things i have a whole collection of resume of all the no damage runs and stuff i've done and, but just want to let you know that so anyway take care and peace